Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video we're going to take a close look on the Ishin Mini Cube. Now first of all I would like to say thank you for Banggood for supplying me with this set. The set includes the Racer Star 1535 propellers. I also got four 8000 kV motors. The motors came in this nice gold color and they are a little bit different from the red motors that I have used previously. First of all, you can see that we have these holes that are intended to be used with the screws to secure the propellers. And you can see that the base is also a little bit thicker. It weighs just a little bit more than these older generation motors, but I think that the ability to secure the propellers is a very nice feature. You can see these are the BR1103B motor, and this one is the BR1103 regular motor which by the way got burnt that's why on this build i'm waiting for a new motor so it's advisable to get one or two spare motors just to put aside they are not expensive cost about eight dollars each so instead of waiting for a couple of weeks for a new motor to come you can just use the spare one I'm waiting for two new micro frames to show up and then I'm going to use the motors with them. So in this video, I'm going to concentrate on the Minikube F3. This is the 1.1 version. So let's start by unboxing all the items we get in this box. So first of all, we got this diagram, which by the way, didn't come with the version one. So when you start building your quadcopter, it's very useful to put it on the side and it gives a good explanation of all the ports that present on the boards. In this bag we're getting all the screws and spacers that we need and in addition we got this small adapter. Unlike the version 1, which had a built-in micro USB port, this one doesn't have any so we need to use an adapter in order to connect it to the computer. So you can use, either use this supplied adapter and then you can use it with one of the cables here or you can use it directly with this USB cable that was included in the kit. In the first bag we're getting the ESC controller. It's a 4-in-1 ESC controller that supports this shot. The constant current is 10 amperes and the peak current for 10 seconds is 15 amperes. You need to connect the motors to these pads. It's pretty easy to connect and it provides a much cleaner build than having independent ESCs. The downside of course that if one ESC gets burnt you can either replace the whole board or you can use an external ESC. And uh, the good thing that you can buy it also independently which means if one item for example get damaged you don't need to buy a new mini cube you can just replace the damaged item. The ESC controller connects to the flight controller, which is the central board, using this provided cable. And as depicted here in the drawing, you can see the first one is the ground, then it supplies 5, five volts, which powers the flight controller. Then we have the PWM2, 1, 4 and 3, so pay attention to the order of these wires. And you can see here, this is the layout of the motors. So. Traditional beta, beta flight layout would be motor 1, 2, 3, 4, so it means this is going to be in the front of the quadcopter. Next bag is the flight controller, which is the board that is placed in the middle. It came with all the necessary wires. In order to get to work with DSMX, which supports 3.3 volts, we will have to solder these two pads. And if you're working with the 5 volt receivers, like the FR Sky or the Fly Sky, you will have to solder these pads together. On the other side, we have here the USB port on the bottom that is used with the provided cable that is connected to the USB cable or to the provided adapter. Over here, we have the VBAT and the ground. Now, this board supports up to three cells lipos, but remember that the 8000 kV motor supports only up to 2S LiPo batteries, so don't forget it, but if using it with other motors, you can safely use it with 3S LiPos. Here is the connector that connects to the bottom plates of the motors, so you simply have to connect it here and you'll be good to go. It 
is also going to power on the board. On the top we can find the OSD connector that powers on a 5 volt camera and also you can use it as for the video in and video out in order to, for the OSD to be overlaid on your video. On the left you can find the buzzer plus and the buzzer minus. Don't be lazy and use a buzzer, it's very useful and can save the quadcopters. These are not so cheap, so losing something like that is not something very pleasant. On the left we can find here, these are the, le the LED controller. So these two are grounds, this is 5 volts. This is either 3.3 volt or 5 volt, depending on the boot pads that you soldered on the back. This is the LED signal, and this one is the RC in. So basically, the top plate, which is your receiver, is going to be connected using these three pads. The board is very light, weighing, weighing only 2.64 grams, versus this is the BQX clone which weighs 2.4 grams but this is almost neglectable and this one has the OSD feature which in my opinion is a great add-on. Last but not least is the top plate which is the receiver. In the bag we get in this IPX antenna, this is the new generation which is a little bit smaller than the old ones they used to sell. We get in the board some screws and these pins that are connecting it with the flight controller using these pads. It has a built-in buzzer as you can see here on the top. This is by the way the DSMX receiver which I accidentally asked them to send me because usually I'm using FR Sky products but I already ordered a new plate so I'm gonna use it on my next build. I don't think I'm going to use this one. As I said earlier these are interchangeable which means that uh, you can use it with different, this is for example, I have here the FR Sky version, so I just ordered the top plate for about 14, 15 dollars, and I'm just gonna use it in the build and put this on the side. Maybe one day I will have a DSMX remote, probably not. Connecting the top plate to the, to the middle plate is pretty straightforward, so you just have to align it and use it to provide the pins, you just have to put it in between, and you can see how I did it in my Bobo 95 build so you can see here how it is connected now let me give you a small advice i really recommend you to put a little bit of this glue on top of the antenna connector this is a silicone glue that get dries pretty fast and it's going to prevent the antenna from getting disconnected and to get you to lose signal or to damage the board it adds only a small weight and it will keep your antenna secure, let it dry for about 10 minutes and you're going to be good to go. Unlike the super glue, it can be removed and you can see after it gets dries, it has like a silicone-like texture. The total weight of the board is around 9 point, let's say 9.7 grams, including all the pings and all the extra wires you will have to put, so it's pretty light. And by the way, it also comes pre flash with Betaflight, and the OSD is configurable with the Betaflight OSD configurator, which is great and saves you the hassle of using mini OSD configurators, so it's pretty easy to use. So, thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to use this board in one of my next builds. I'm still waiting for some frames to arrive. Probably it will happen in the next week or two. So see you on my next videos and goodbye.